my name is Austin Libel. Today is going to be the first video in my new video series on working with data flows inside of Azure Data Factory. We're going to look at a beginning to end use case for using data flows in Azure Data Factory, where each video we look at a different transformation that we're going to make to a set of data that we want to get ready for reporting purposes. This is a common tool known as ETL for Extract, Transform, Load. And what we want to do is we want to extract the data from a source, raw data. We want to bring it into Azure Data Factory and use a data flow to be able to transform the data and get it ready for reporting purposes and ultimately load the data into its final resting place so that I can have some data analysts go through and use that for reporting purposes and use that with business intelligence. So we are going to look at data flows in Azure Data Factory as the method to do that. Data flows are not the only method we have to do that, but it's one that we're going to explore for this class. It's gaining popularity because of its low code to no code environment for being able to do transformations. So whether you have been doing uh, data movement for 20 years or you're just getting started, data flows are very easy because of the graphical user interface that they provide to be able to do transformation. So let's head over to Azure Data Factory now and check out how we can start creating our first data flow. So I've prepared for this video series a new fresh data factory that we're going to work with. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a linked service to the data set that we want to bring in and start working with with our data flow. The best place to go through and create a new linked service in our data factory is going to be in the Manage Hub. We have several different hubs that we can explore inside of Data Factory. I can expand my navigational pane and see my Manage Hub is towards the bottom. So currently I do not have a linked service that's going to allow me to connect to data, but I'm going to create one. A linked service is nothing more than a connection string, if you will, to a data source that I want to bring data from and put that into our data factory to be able to use and load it to a new destination. So I'm going to create a new linked service to a data lake that I have for this video to be able to bring in that data. So I'm going to come over to the new. I'm going to go over here and search for Azure Data Lake and it pops up right here. The one I'm going to choose is Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. I'm going to select that and click continue. I do want to go ahead and give this a name. So I'm going to call this AZ for Azure, ADLS for Azure Data Lake Storage. And then I'll call this my Pragmatic Works PWADF linked service. So I'm pointing to a data lake that's going to be associated with my Pragmatic Works company, and I'm going to grab data that I have already inside of there. I'm going to make sure I select my subscription as well as the storage account that I want to connect with. As always, we will test our connection to make sure we have a viable connection and that was successful. So I'm going to go ahead and create that linked service for myself. And it was successfully created. Awesome. Now the next step is I need to create a data set that allows me to bring in the data that I want to connect with and it's going to utilize this linked service to bring that data in. So I'm going to go over to the author hub now to create a new data set for myself. I can expand this and there are no data sets currently available to me, but I will create one now to point to the data lake storage that I want to bring that file over from. So again, I'm going to go to Azure Data Lake this time pointing to, again, the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 Dataset Connector. I'll click Continue. I know already that this is a delimited text CSV file that I want to bring into my data factory, so I'm going to select CSV, but you have the option to connect with any of these formats. 
I want to give this a name and what this is going to be is my Azure Azure Data Lake storage again this is going to be a movie ratings data set so I'm going to call it movie ratings I'm going to use the link service that I just created for myself to be able to point to the data lake that I have and then I'm going to come over here to my file path now I can manually insert some information into my file path here if I would like but I'm actually going to go over to the browse button and go through and browse to the file that I want to bring into data factory I have a uh, directory that is created for this specific video and I want to go to the movie directory and then go over and look at my ratings so I have one file in this movie directory the ratings.csv file that I'm going to bring into my data factory now because it is a CSV, a delimited text file, I'm going to choose to use the first row as header and I'm going to import the schema because I want to bring that information into my data factory as well. I'm going to click OK. Now I have this ready to work with inside of a data flow. Now whenever you create a new artifact inside a data factory, you're going to get a publish all command telling you that you need to save this down. So I'm going to go ahead and save this inside of my data factory by clicking publish all and publish. And then I'm going to go over and create a new data flow to use this data to make some transformational logic. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new data flow next to my factory resources on the ellipsis there. I'm going to give this data flow a name in just a second. I want to go ahead and turn on this data flow debug right away. This is going to take a few minutes to spin up and uh, I'll talk through it as it's turning on. So I'm going to go ahead and click this toggle right here to turn this on and say, OK, this can have a one hour time to live. I'll I'll turn this on and I'll talk through it once this gets working. So let's first give this data flow a name. We're going to call this our movie ratings data flow. And there we go. Our data flow debug is on. So what data flow debug is, it is the compute source to allow us to work with a Apache Spark cluster, a Spark cluster that's going to be used to make this transformational logic happen. Data flows are great inside of Synapse because they are populated with a graphical user interface where I do not need to necessarily know SQL or any other language to be able to do my transformation. Transformation, I can populate this data, this data flow with a data source and make transformations inside of that data source. So I'm going to go ahead and add one source to this data flow. I'm going to click add source once I click on that box there. And then I'm going to go and give this a name. This is again going to be my movie ratings. And then I do need to go and populate this data set with which data set I want to point to. I currently just have one. Need to make sure my name is going to be correct for that. So there we go. I've changed that around now. Now I need to point to my movie ratings data set. Now I have five columns you can see that have already been brought into this right here. I can go look at my projection to see my different column names and I can see my different types of data as well, my data types. The other awesome thing about data flows is you can go to data preview and I can click refresh here and I can see a live view as my of my data as I'm making transformations with that. So whether I do a select transformation, a filter transformation, an aggregate transformation, it does not matter. I will be able to see a live view of that once that data flow debug session is on and running. That is, again, empowered by a Spark cluster that's going to allow me to see the transformations happening in real time using Scala as the native language for using that data flow transformation. So once this loads into our environment, we're going to be able to see that I have a list of movies that I have rated over the years on a movie rating service. And uh, I have lots of movie here, movies here that I can go through and see. We're just seeing a preview of about 100 of those at this time. 
So in the next data flow video, we're going to go through and look to see how we can actually start to work with this data and make some transformations on it. This is going to be the um, the start of a awesome series where we're going to go through and work with a set of data and see if we can do uh, and make some transformation logic so we can better understand our data. This has just been an introduction to our Azure Data Factory Data Flow series that we're going to be going through over the next several months. So I hope you stay tuned for the next several videos that are going to be in the series where we make some transformations inside of Azure Data Factory. We are going to be doing a select transformation next. So be on the lookout for that where we are going to remove some of the columns that we do not need from this data set. Hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you are interested in learning more about data flows, definitely check out either our Azure Data Factory Bootcamp that we have coming up very soon, or potentially our Azure Synapse Analytics where we have data flows available to us as well. We also have our on-demand learning platform where we cover quite a lot of this content also. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube if you are not already and be ready for those next videos on data flows. And I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.